Scripture reading today comes from Joshua 24, one single verse, 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This end is the reading for today. So today is the day that we stop and we remember the lives that were lost during the horrible events of 9-11. And I know that those of us that are old enough, this is a thing that occurred in our lives where we remember the scenes of that day vividly. For me personally, I was a senior in high school that year, and that day was to be our first soccer game of the season. We were supposed to play Belfont, and of course that game was postponed. And when the news of the attacks reached us in the school, we spent the day watching the events unfold on televisions in the classrooms. That is with the exception of one class, my English class. Now, my English teacher that year was an experienced teacher. I believe she uh, went on to teach maybe five more years after I was there and then retired. And she knew what was happening was going to be an event that would change all of our lives. She knew that we would be inundated with news and questions of why this was allowed to happen in the following days. And so she chose to have us continue on in class as if it was a normal day. And at the time, I couldn't understand why we were just acting as if nothing happened during that class. And I couldn't understand why she just wanted it to go on as if it was a normal day. But as I've gotten older, I understand that she, now that she was simply trying to give young people one more moment of the world that they had known prior to being thrust into a new world. I am thankful for her efforts that day. See, she made the choice that day to try and help her students in the only way she knew how. Whenever we are faced as a, uh, as a people, we are faced with a tragedy of this magnitude, or even the ones that are much smaller in our own lives, the question that is often raised is, why? Why is it that God allowed something like this to happen? Why is it that when we look around the world, we see so much evil being perpetrated on people? Why is it that this thing is happening? Now we as Christians, we say to ourselves that we believe that God can control everything in this world. And we know that he has created it to have an order. And we know that he loves us as witnessed by him sending his son Jesus Christ to save us. So if that is the case, if God can control everything and God does love us, then why does he allow evil to persist in this world? Brothers and sisters, this is a deep theological question that people have struggled with today and that people have been struggling with since the very beginning. So let us take some time today to examine why something like the attacks on 9-11 were allowed to happen and why evil is allowed to flourish in this world. And what role does God play in those things? Now, in order for us to do this, I think it is necessary that we break apart the problem and talk through each part. And by doing this, I think we can come to better understand why evil does exist and why it may seem to us that God is not stopping it. Now, for people with a strong sense of faith, that very question of why God allows evil to happen, especially to good people, seems like a very easy question to answer. 
There are people that are simply able to say it is all part of the plan of God. We are not capable of understanding God's plan, and we shouldn't waste time trying to. But for so many people, that explanation feels lacking. Now, I wish that I could stand before you and tell you that my faith has always been that strong, but it would be dishonest of me to say so. Do not misunderstand me. I have faith. I pray that my faith is strong. But for me to say that I have never thought about why evil exists or why bad things happen would be a lie. And to say that I myself have never struggled or asked God why something was allowed to happen would simply be untrue. And I don't think I need to be ashamed of that fact. And if you have felt that way, I don't think you need to be ashamed either. Life can be difficult at times. And it is indeed human for us to question why. So let us start with why evil exists in the world. Well, if we look at our scriptures, we can see that there has been evil from the start. In the story of the Garden of Eden, we are told how the serpent is used to convince Adam and Eve to go against the commandments of God. And their punishment for going against his one commandment was to be kicked out of paradise. And when the human species was kicked out of this paradise, they were thrust into a world fraught with danger. By being forced to leave that place, they were now exposed to the fury of nature. So when we consider why people are hurt and killed in natural disasters, there is our answer. We are living in a world that is not the paradise that we started in. And we are living in a world that is not the paradise that we started in because of the actions of man. This is also why we are to struggle with the loss of good people to disease and injury. You see, we are in a world that is not perfect and we are subject to that decay. But what do we make of the evils that were perpetrated by man? What do we say when we see a major attack like 9-11 or the terrible rash of violence that we see going through our country? Well, this evil can be brought down to this basic idea, and it is that this. See, we are all given free will. We are free to make choices as humans. Nearly all of us are capable of the violence that we have seen played out so many times in our lives. Now, do not mishear me, church. I said we are capable of the violence, meaning if we were to make the same choices that those people made, we could conceivably perform the same terrible actions they did. I am not saying that we would do it. I am simply saying that we are capable of doing it. But free will is a gift from God. It is the ability for us to determine the course of our lives. Now, there have been people that have made the argument that the world would be better without free will. If we only had to do what God calls us to do, and if we were always forced to make the right choices. But brothers and sisters, that is not the plan that God had for us as a people. Last week, we talked about making the choice to follow Jesus. And we talked about how each one of us has to make that decision in our lives. If we didn't have free will, then the choice to follow Jesus wouldn't really be a choice, would it? And if it wasn't a choice to follow Jesus, then would God have ever even sent him in the first place? You see, free will is important. And perhaps even more important is the way that we choose to exercise our free will. In our scripture for today, we find Joshua speaking before the tribes of Israel, and he is reminding them that they have free will. You see, the people of Israel have now crossed over to the promised land, yet some of them are still worshiping the gods of the people of Egypt, the ones that they had brought with them from their captivity. And Joshua reminds them that it is time to choose. You can continue to follow the false gods, or you can choose to follow the God that brought you out of slavery and into the promised land. And he closes by telling them that he and his house will worship the Lord. 
You see, he is telling them, as he is telling us today through those words, you have a choice to continue to worship the things that are false in this world, or you can choose to worship God with your free will. I hope that choice is clear for you. But we need to know that with that choice to follow God, we are given promises for this world in addition to the promise of everlasting life after this world. For this world, we are promised that God will walk with us through all things. When evil comes to our doorstep, we will have God there with us. Does that mean that bad things will never happen to us? No, it does not. You see, that is a common problem that people struggle with. They believe that their faith is there to protect them from the bad things in this world. But our faith is there to help us cope with the evil in this world. It is there to reassure us that when evil happens in the world, that God is with us. And our faith is there to remind us that this world is not our home, that our true home is in heaven with Christ. That is the purpose of our faith when it comes to combating evil. You see, the truth is, this world is broken. It is broken because of sin. And as we are a part of this world, we too are broken by sin. But the good news is that through Jesus Christ, we can be free of that sin. However, there will always be those that will use their free will to go against what God teaches. Now, so far today, I have painted a pretty dark picture of free will. But I think it's important for us to remember that free will is not always used for evil. Being free to choose the path in our lives is truly a blessing. We are free to, free to choose where we live, who we love, and where we worship. And indeed, in this country, we value that freedom above just about anything else that is of this world. So on this day, when we remember the evil that was done by men choosing to pursue violence against their fellow man, I think we would be remiss to not discuss the good that we saw on September 11th as well. You see, it was free will used for a good purpose on this day that continues to inspire us to the greater good. On that faithful day, as we watched the attacks unfold, we also saw some of the bravest acts of selflessness that we had ever seen. We watched as first responders and just ordinary people use their choice of free will to rush into burning buildings that were crumbling around them to try and help others. You see, they had a choice to make that day as well, to simply give up and admit that all were lost or to bravely charge into a difficult situation. And we honor those this day that gave their lives and the ultimate act of caring for others. We saw the choice of free will being used for good in the way that the community of faith grew after that. The return of so many people to the churches that had not been in some time. But what does this all mean for us 21 years later? Well, we have certainly seen our world change from that day on. But the fact does remain that each and every day, in all of our interactions, we still have free will. We still have the ability to choose to do the right thing. And we still have the ability to choose to help others. And we still have the ability to choose who we will serve. The question that will always remain for us is that who will we choose? Well, brothers and sisters, it is, it is my prayer that each and every one of us, each and every day, will say that as for me and my household, we will choose to serve the Lord. My challenge for you this week is this. What is one thing you can do to use your free will this week to spread kindness? Do it this week. And a bonus challenge for you this week. If you want to learn more about this topic of why things happen, I recommend that you read a book called Simply Why by Adam Hamilton. I found it to be a great source for this week's sermon. Amen.